This is the Catholic Daily Journal for Tuesday, May the 7th, 2019. It's the feast day of St. Rose Venerini. She was born in 1656 in Italy and was all set to go the standard Italian female saint route. The boys all loved her, but she chose Jesus and entered a convent. But she had to leave the convent to take care of her sick, widowed mother. She took the opportunity to reach out to the local community, and she invited local women to her home to pray the rosary. Rose was astonished at how little these ladies knew about their Catholic faith. And so she studied up and began to teach them, informally at first, and then in the context of study groups. She was encouraged by some of the moms to open a preschool. Then Cardinal Barbarigo asked her to organize and train teachers for the schools in his archdiocese. Now she wasn't a nun and she really wasn't a teacher. She was really just an enthusiastic laywoman who did all the thankless legwork to make it possible for the nuns, the teachers, to do their jobs. She lived a life of holiness and she was beatified in 1952. We have three historic foundings today. First, back in 1664, King Louis XIV of France, the Sun King, began construction on the Palace of Versailles. King Louis wasn't exactly a man of the people, and his opulent and expensive palace outside of Paris became a symbol of the ivory tower thinking of the French monarchy. Versailles stood then as a constant sign of the division between the haves and the have-nots. It was also a not-so-subtle way for King Louis to show off to other royals who visited. They saw the grandeur, and they came to believe that France was the greatest artistic, military, wealth, etc. nation on earth. After the royals were dispatched, each new government, despite all the lip service to egalitarianism and social equality, happily moved into the palace, and it remains in use today as a venue for everything from elaborate parties to the negotiation and signing of treaties. Well, today or so, in 1718, the city of New Orleans was founded by the French Mississippi Company on land that was actually inhabited by the Chittimacha Indians. It was named for Philippe II, the Duke of Orleans, and it was a mixed bag in terms of location. The city was right at the mouth of the mighty Mississippi River. Now that would make it one of the most important strategic cities in the Americas. At the same time, it's a swamp on land which is effectively an island made by a crisscross of rivers and bayous, much of which actually manages to be 30 and as much as 50 feet, you know, 10 to 15 meters below sea level. And it's on a delta, which means the soil is constantly shifting, adding land here while eroding land there. It's highly susceptible to flooding, and all that standing water breeds mosquitoes large enough to work for Amazon delivering packages. The city would trade hands a number of times before finally becoming part of the United States in the Louisiana Purchase of 1803. Finally, today in 1909, Edwin H. Land founded the Polaroid Company. He went to Harvard to study chemistry, but left after a year and moved to NYC. And there he invented the first cheap filters capable of polarizing light that would go on to become Polaroid film. Because he didn't have a lab, he took to breaking and entering the lab at Columbia University. He did most of his research reading at the New York Public Library. His big insight was simple in hindsight. Light filters at that time were expensive because growing large crystals was expensive. Land realized that properly manufactured, millions of superabundant, tiny polarizing crystals could do the job just fine. He returned to Harvard with his invention patented, but never got a degree. He was too focused and single-minded and couldn't be bothered with things like tests. Land's many inventions in the field of photography made him rich, and he gave generously, especially to libraries, before his death in 1991. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. Until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.